Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you a very easy way to use Pandas to extract information from websites. If you're new to the channel, one of my goals is to help Excel users to learn Python so that they can be more productive at work. And sometimes I like to have Excel references in my videos so that you can have a better understanding on what features in Excel I'm trying to replicate in Python. In Excel, you probably already know that inside the Power Query functions, there's a from web and you can just simply paste a website. Then it's going to grab information from there. So for example, this table with a full list of uh, S&P 500 companies in it, uh, you can load it into Excel like that. So today I'm going to show you how to do the similar thing in Python. So this Power Query way is very easy to download information from websites, but it has limited functionalities as it's hard to manipulate the data later on. And um, if we use Python, it'll be much easier to do that. So today I'm going to create a stock tracker, uh, basically with all the S&P 500 companies. And what I'm going to get is the company name, its latest price, the PE ratio, and then the gross margin. Of course, you can add more metrics uh, if you want, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm only going to include these three metrics. So first of all, this is the website that we're going to use to get all the S&P 500 companies. And you can see that on this Wikipedia page, there's the list of S&P 500 companies. Then we can use the pandas as we mentioned that in this tutorial, we're go going to use only pandas to extract that information from the Wikipedia page. There's a function in pandas, read HTML and we basically just paste in this URL that um, we want to extract. And what got returned is actually a list of data frames. We can confirm that by checking the type and it says a list. And we can also check the length of the list. So basically there are two, uh, two data frames inside this list and we can access the very first element in this list by using the zero index. And as we can see, this very first data frame is exactly this table uh, right here. Let's also take a look what's inside the second data frame. So it appears that if we scroll down this Wikipedia page, there's another table down here. Um, that's the selected change to the list of S&P 500 components. We don't need this table, so we're just gonna ignore this list one or the second list. And I want to clarify that this and this dot read HTML doesn't work on any website. It works only when the website has a table element. To confirm whether the web page has any tables. Simply just select any elements inside the table and right click inspect. So here, as you can see, this is the raw HTML code for the Wikipedia page. You see that this is the table and the table tag means that this whole thing here is a HTML table. And in order to use the PD dot read HTML, the web page has to contain a table. Otherwise, this method will not extract anything from the website. If you want to be able to get anything from a website, then you have to use some other more advanced techniques for a web scraping. That will be a topic for another tutorial. All right, so now we have the full list of the S&P 500 companies and let's extract only the symbol column to get their stock ticker symbol. And to do that, we can just use S list so this is our first data frame and we only care about the symbol column then to list i'm going to call this as sp500 so now here i've basically just converted the symbol column into a list to get the metrics for individual stocks i'm going to use this market watch website i'm just going to search a stock symbol, let's say a Tesla. And if you scroll down to somewhere in the middle and click on the company profile, you will be able to find all these metrics that I mentioned in the beginning of the tutorial, for example, the, the PE and the gross margin. There's also the stock latest price over here. So let's use the same pandas read HTML method on this page and see what kind of information we get. I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to create an object called Tesla and pd.readhtml, then pass in this URL 
again tesla this is going to be a list of data frames and i'm going to check how many data frames are in this list so apparently there are 11 data frames in our list i'm going to print out each data frames so that i can get a better understanding on what's inside each data frame and i'm going to use a loop to print out all the data frames So here we go. Apparently this very first data frame, that's just this very top table over here, uh, the overall market. And the second data frame here, this contains the latest price. Apparently this is uh, this table right here. Uh, nothing in the third and the fourth table. In the fifth table, and this is apparently the valuation uh, table right here. It has the PE current and PE ratio. And the sixth table here, this is revenue per employee. This is uh, the efficiency. In the seventh or the eighth table, we have the gross margin. All right, so the tables we need are just uh, table number one, number four, and number seven. So let's try to extract that. So price is going to be Tesla, the first table, and I believe it's uh, closed. And if we do uh, zero, then, then we can get the price here. So for the PE ratio, it's going to be the fourth data frame. And this zero right here refers to the column with the header zero. And we want that to be equal to this row right here. And that's going to give us this number here, but we don't want this one and then this value here. So what we can do is we can reference the number one here. refers to this column with the header one. And if we want to get this exact value here, what we can do is to list and it's going to put this inside the list, then get the very first element or the only element. And then we can get this PE ratio from there. So for the margin, we can do something similar, but it's going to be on the seventh table. That's going to be uh, seven and one refers to this uh, column. And to make things simpler, we're just going to get the zero element or the very first element like this. That's going to return the gross margin for this company. All right. So now we understand how to extract certain metrics for an individual company. Let's create a function to do this so that later we can just loop through all the 500 companies and then use the same function to get all those metrics. I'm going to call this function get data and I'll pass in an argument called a ticker, the stock ticker. So my data frame is going to be a pd.readHTML and inside here I'm going to use a raw and format string. So if I show you this, um, so if you look at the URL of this market watch website, comparing the, the company Tesla and Microsoft, you will see that the only difference between the URL is this part here, the stock ticker or the company company name stock ticker one is tesla the other is a microsoft so all we need to do is we can just replace the stock ticker here with the ticker that we're going to use or we're going to pass into this function let me make the screen bigger so it's easier to see so for the price i'm just going to copy whatever we have over here and uh, replace this with uh, ds also this one is going to be the pe I'm going to uh, create a variable here just called pe and or inside that variable, uh, but make sure that you replace all these uh, tef Tesla references to the DF, which stand for uh, this current data frame right here. And also we're going to need a gross margin. I'm calling it uh, G margin equal to, again, instead of Tesla, replace it with the DF because we're not sure if we'll be able to find all the three metrics for each company on the MarketWatch website. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some error handling code block such that um, it's going to try to get the price first. And if it doesn't find the price, then we'll, then we'll just set the price to not available so that our code will return something instead of uh, just erroring out. And this way we'll make sure that we'll always get the same number of entries for all the three metrics. All right, so once that's done, I'm going to return price, PE, and gross margin. So in case you don't know yet, for a Python function, you can actually return multiple values out of a function. Um, so you're not limited with returning only one value. You can return as many values as you want. Okay, so I'm going to run this code and let's test it on, uh, let's say Microsoft. I'm going to say price PE G margin equal to get data and the ticker symbol is Microsoft. The price is uh, 323, uh, seems correct. 
EE36, which is also correct, and the gross margin, 68.93, which is also correct. Okay, so our function seems to be working, and let's go ahead and get the metrics for all 500 companies. To do that, I'm going to create an empty list first. We're going to loop through the S&P 500 company list, and for each company, we are going to get the price, PE, and the gross margin for that company using the get data function and we simply just pass in the i which is each element inside the s p 500 list and i'm going to create a dictionary for each company so we have the company name it's going to be i their stock price it's going to be price their pe ratio is going to be pe and their gross margin is going to be the margin so this is the dictionary for one company, but since we have 500 companies, we're going to add this list to the stock list. So stock list out of 10, like that. And let's run this. It's going to take a while because right now it's actually taking each company from the S&P 500 list and it's going to visit the web page for each company on this market watch website. And then it's going to extract the information, for example, the stock price, the P ratio, and then the gross margin from market watch website. I I also want to mention that if you're trying to extract a lot of information at once, I highly recommend that you add a timer in between of your functions that read the HTML because uh, this is essentially web scraping and if you don't set a limit on your code, it's going to send a lot of requests to the website and that's going to put a lot of stress on that website. But here, since uh, MarketWatch is a pretty large website and we are only doing 500 or so uh, requests so it should be okay in this case but i definitely recommend that if you're doing this for a lot of companies at once definitely add something like a time dot slip uh, point one or something seconds to slow down your code all right so now our code just finished and we can put this list of dictionaries inside a and this data frame. I'm going to call that a DF complete. That will be this PD data frame and simply pass in this stock list. Let's take a look what's inside. So this is our list of all the S&P 500 companies with their company stock symbol, price, PE ratio, and gross margin all inside one table. And if you want, you can export this to an Excel file. And here you go, this is the information, but uh, right now it's in Excel. If you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button. It's gonna help the channel a lot, and I really appreciate it. That's all for today. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one.